are these kings? The king of the north is Russia. I'll prove that in just a moment. The king of the south is the Arab Islamic forces. The king of the west is America and the United Kingdom that will be led by the Antichrist who will force every person on the earth to receive his mark in his right hand or their forehead. Those who do not will be decapitated. There is the king of the east, which is China, a military superpower who neither fears nor respects the United States of America. There are four kings playing this final game of thrones. They want to sit on that throne. They want to dominate and control you. And without Jesus Christ in your life, they will do it. Who is this God? around whom history's climatic events will occur. Who is he? Ezekiel 38, 2. Son of man, set your face against Gog. Gog is a man. Today, that man is Vladimir Putin. Magog is the land of Russia, the king of the north. Obviously, the name Russia does not appear in Scripture. But the geographic location given in the Bible is pinpoint accuracy. Let's connect the dots in prophetic scripture. When you go to Genesis 10 and 2, Magog is referred to as one of the sons of Japheth, whom ethnologists tell us that his descendants after the flood of Noah migrated from Asia Minor to the north beyond the Caspian and Black Sea. The land beyond the Caspian and Black Sea is Russia. Listen to this Bible and historical fact. Gog is a descendant of Esau. Jacob and Esau had a very bitter relationship. The bitterness of that relationship has spread from generation to generation. The crisis in the Middle East right now is a family feud that was never really settled. Haman is a descendant of Esau. Haman planned the first Holocaust in the land of Persia, which is modern-day Iran. The plot was discovered and destroyed by Queen Esther. Historians recognize Hitler's grandfather was Jewish. Hitler is a descendant of Esau. Jewish scholars state that all the four kings are descendants of Esau. Remember that their objective is to destroy the land of Israel and the Jewish people. God said, Jacob I have loved and Esau I have hated. That is a powerful statement. That's recorded in Romans, the ninth chapter and the 13th verse. Why? Because God looked through the telescope of time and he saw the river of blood that the descendants of Esau would cause the Jewish people to shed. And he said, I hate that man. The bitterness between Jacob and Esau has lasted for thousands of years. Think about it. Follow this. Gog is the man as the ruler of Magog, the land which is Russia, is described by Ezekiel as the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. There are three things here, a prince and two cities, Meshech and Tubal. The expression chief prince is translated in the NASB Bible as the prince of Rosh. Rosh is the root word for the modern word Russia. Gog is also related to Meshech and Tubal, which is a variation of the spelling of Moscow and Tobolsk, an area in the rural section of Russia. Therefore, the king of the north is Russia, and the chief prince today is Vladimir Putin. He is trying to rebuild the Russian empire, and with it he thinks he can conquer the world. Who are Russia's allies that will follow Russia in the invasion of Israel? Ezekiel 38, 5, and 6 list the five major armies in this massive invasion. Persia, which is Iran, planned the first holocaust under Haman. Haman hung on the gallows that he built for the Jewish people. 
There is a Bible principle that exactly what you do to the Jewish people, God will do to you. Haman built a gallows to hang the Jewish people on, and he and his sons hung on that gallows. It goes like this. I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. It was true then. It's true today. It will be true forever. God says so, and his word is eternally true. Give the Lord praise in the house. Ethiopia, those are the Islamic Arab Spring nations driven by the demonic spirit of anti-Semitism. Libya, Gomer and his bands, Ezekiel 38, 6. Rabbinical scholar Raphael Eisenberg states, quote, Gomer and all his bands are the Germans followed by the French and the British, also coming with Russia, Togarma, was the son of Gomer. According to Josephus, this is Turkey and nine more minor nations that will join Turkey. What unites them all? The spirit of anti-Semitism, the hatred for God's chosen people. Why? Because God used the Jewish people to write this book. Everything in this Bible that liberates us from the power of sin was written by the anointed hand of a Jewish writer. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was a Jewish rabbi. He's coming back as a Jewish rabbi. He's coming back wearing a prayer shawl. The majority of the fighting force invading Israel will be Ishmael's descendants. Ishmael, remember, is the son of Abraham with Hagar. Hagar and Ishmael were cast out, and the bitter resentment has lasted for thousands of years. God says to Russia in Ezekiel 38, 7, be a guard unto them. Say that with me. Be a guard unto them. The better translation is you, Russia, will be a commander unto them. You will lead these five vicious anti-Semitic armies to crush the chosen people, and my fury is going to come up in my face. Let me tell you something. The only thing that matches the love of God is the wrath of God. The only thing that matches the beauty of heaven is the horror of hell. Don't get the idea that a loving God does not punish people who break his word. God says, when I see you invade this covenant land, now the fight is with me because I am the defender of Israel. And he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. You're going to lead these five vicious anti-Semitic armies to crush the chosen people. And the fight is then mine. I'm going to kill five out of six of you. It says that in Ezekiel 39, verse 2 in the King James Version. Some of you are reading other watered-down versions that miss that fine point, but that's in the King James Version print. Bible theologians, principally Jewish, say God's reaction to the God may God war is written by King David in Psalms 2. And here it is. Why do the heathen rage? Now, the word heathen there means Gentile nations. Why do the Gentile nations rage and imagine a vain thing? That the kings of the earth take counsel against the Lord, that's God, and his anointed one, that would be Jesus Christ, saying, let us break their bonds. Let us break the Ten Commandments. Let us throw the word of God out of public schools. Let us destroy the morality of the nation. Let us make it impossible for a child to be born without living in the threat of murder in the womb of the mother. Let us bring back the occult and throw God out of every system of government. We live in that very dispensation of time. And then the God of heaven does this. He said... I'm laughing you to scorn. We call it in Texas a horse laugh. Ha, 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 you simple-minded morons. I'm going to smash you like a potter with a rod of iron smashes a potter's vessel. A potter's vessel is clay. When you hit clay with a rod of iron, 
It will splatter and go in a dozen pieces. Whenever God crushes this army, it will be a testimonial to his might and to his majesty. Those who survive will go back to the nations from which they came and say, we went against Israel with superior numbers, with superior military might, and 84% of us were lost. We alone have come back to tell you that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is God, and there's not another. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There will be a massive earthquake that will reduce mountains to rubble, and every wall shall fall to the ground. Think of the massive mountains around Israel. There will be death by friendly fire. By the way, the promised purpose of that earthquake is to open the ground and bury them alive. Death by friendly fire, Ezekiel 38, 21. And every man's sword shall be turned against his brother. We call that in military terms, friendly fire. In the chaos and the confusion of a massive earthquake, with dust and debris so thick it hides the sun, with five armies speaking five languages, opening fire, they're going to turn. In that small geographical region, their weapons on each other, and thousands are going to be killed by their own people. But then comes God's signature. He said, I just want to do something so people will know I did it. In the Old Testament, sinners were stoned to death. One of you remember that. So God says, I am going to send hailstones from heaven. Ezekiel 38, 22. I will rain down on the enemies of Israel great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Oh, pastor, that's Old Testament stuff. God doesn't do that today. Wrong. Wrong. He's demonstrating his awesome power right in front of our eyes, and we're just not watching it. God himself stoned the armies of the five kings that fought against Joshua in Israel. Read it. It says, and those who died by stoning were more than those who fell from the swords of Israel. Five out of six who come with Russia are going to die at the hand of God. Three times in Ezekiel 38, God says that the world may know that I am God and my people, the Jewish people, will know that I am still their defender. I have not forgotten them and I have not turned my face away from them. They are still the covenant people. Give the Lord praise in the house. The world is full of turmoil and uncertainty. Many live in fear of what the future might bring. Soon the trumpet will sound and those who are alive will be caught up and will meet the Lord. But what will happen before his return? There are signs everywhere that the rapture is near. Jerusalem is reunited with Israel and the nations on earth are preparing for war. Through your study of Bible prophecy, you can gain wisdom and prepare yourself for things to come. For your gift of any amount, we'll send you an autographed copy of Pastor Hagee's End of the Age book. For your generous gift of $175 or more, we will also include our Prophecy Bible and an End of the Age study guide. Stay in the Word and share the Gospel with your loved ones. The coming of Jesus Christ is imminent. What a day that will be. Receive these resources today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org eternity. When the Antichrist comes, the church is gone. There will be a global economic crash. The world is desperate to resolve its differences. The Antichrist will do just that at the start of the tribulation. Seven for a week is talking about seven years. And that treaty will be the treaty that starts the tribulation period. Many will believe that the Antichrist is the Messiah. He is in fact, a false messiah. He comes as a man of peace, but he is a monster. He will be a wolf in sheep's clothing that will make a covenant with many. A covenant with many will include the Jewish people, the Palestinians, and the Roman Catholic Church. First, 
I believe he will present a seven-year peace treaty that will allow the Jewish people to build the third temple, Solomon's temple, on the Temple Mount. That alone will cause the Jewish people to have hysterical happiness among the religious Jews. Second, I believe the seven-year treaty will give the Catholic Church control over the holy sites in Jerusalem. The truth of the matter of history is that the Catholic Church has been trying to gain a sense of control of Jerusalem and the holy sites for decades. In the book, Petrus Romanus is the full story. It reads, and I quote, a friend of Shimon Perez, the former president of Israel, claimed in an interview that in May 1993, he delivered a letter from President of Israel Perez to the Pope, promising to internationalize Jerusalem, granting the Vatican authority of the holy sites, end of quote. So the fact of history is that this has been trying to happen now for decades, and I believe it will happen then. Third, the third element of the seven-year peace accord will be between Israel and the Palestinians, and there's going to be some arm twisting here, but there will be a two-state solution, and it's guaranteed for seven years. However, in three and a half years, Russia is going to invade Israel and break that treaty and try to rule the world. What is the motive of Russia and Iran with other Islamic nations in attacking Israel? First is the demonic spirit of anti-Semitism. The only thing the Islamic nations hate more than each other is Israel. The two-state solution is not going to happen until the Islamic states admit in writing that Israel has the right to exist, the right to defend itself, and the right to defensible borders. That will never happen until the Antichrist comes and the rapture of the church has happened. Russia's primary concern is to plunder the wealth of Israel. That is right now gas and oil. The Wall Street Journal reports Israel's natural gas discovery off of the coast of Haifa, the largest in the world, is enough to drive the vehicles of Israel for a hundred years. Listen, this is a quote. There's enough to destabilize the economy of the Middle East in the favor of Israel. That's an awesome statement. Russia needs oil and gas to run its war machine. Oil is now so cheap, Russia can't afford to drill for it. In the frozen tundra of, of Russia. But taking it by force from Israel is certainly meets their military objective. The third motive of Russia, Vladimir Putin has a problem. It's radical Islam. There are 20 million radical Islamics living in Russia today. Putin is going to use this compulsion they have to attack Israel and the Jewish people, to call for a jihad of his Russian Islamics to join Iran and the other radical Islamic nations in this invasion of Israel. God is in heaven saying, come here. Come here. Get, come on, come on. As soon as you touch the soil of this covenant land, you're gone. I love this story. The mystery that I've been trying to resolve for 50 years I discovered while doing extensive research for this sermon series. The mystery was how did Russia way off in the far north become an anti-Semitic nation? Israel is way down here and here they are up here beyond the Black Sea. So a Jewish scholar by the name of Raphael Eisenberg reveals this amazing historical fact dealing with Rome and Russia in history. Listen. Eisenberg writes, quote, the kingdom of evil and apostasy is none other than the communist of Russia, whose desire is to rule the world is obvious. They are descendants of the notorious Roman Empire, which our sages predicted will cover the entire world before Messiah comes. And he's right. 
because the rule of the Antichrist is going to cover the earth. It is known that the original Roman Empire separated into two branches, the western branch and the eastern branch. Listen, after this division, the daughter of the Roman Empire in Constantinople married the Russian emperor. Remember, Rome hates the Jewish people. Rome crucified the Son of God. That woman carried that evil seed of anti-Semitism by marriage to Russia. And that seed grew in the leadership of Russia. It expanded to the people. It produced the protocols of the learned elders of Zion and the reason hundreds of thousands of Jewish people died. The four kings, Russia, Egypt, the European Union, and China have two things in common. Again, to destroy the Jewish people and to rule the world. God says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. Egypt persecuted the Jewish people, and God killed the firstborn child in every family that did not have lamb's blood over the door. He destroyed their economy in a week. Their cattle were dead in the field. Their locusts ate the crops. God crushed their military by drowning Pharaoh, the most powerful man, turned into fish food in about two minutes. Where are the Babylonians? They're gone. Where are the Persians? They're gone. Where are the Greeks? They're gone. Where are the Romans? They're gone. Where are those goose-stepping lunatic Nazis that followed a living devil named Adolf Hitler? They're gone, buried in the boneyard of history and good riddance. In closing, when is this going to happen? Ezekiel 38, 8, in the latter years. Say that with me, in the latter years. In the latter years means at the end of the dispensation of grace. Daniel says in Daniel 12, 4, God speaking to Daniel, Daniel, shut up the words of the book and seal it until the time of the end. That's right now. When knowledge will be greatly increased, greatly increased means a knowledge explosion. God said through Daniel, when there's a generation that has a knowledge explosion, that generation is going to see the coming of the king. We are that nation. From the gates of Eden to 1900, transportation was the same. People rode horses, wagons, then came the cars, then came the planes, jets. We have had that explosion. Medicine was about the same. And now we have so increased in medicine over the past hundred years, we've had to redefine death because we can keep people alive with medicines and stimulants. Communication was about the same. And then came the telegraph, and then the telephone, and then the television. And the telewoman. <laughs> when is it coming? In the latter days when Israel goes home. 1948. When is it coming? In the latter days when Jerusalem is reconnected to Israel. 1967. When is it going to happen? In the latter years when I show you signs in the heavens and the sun refuses to shine, the eclipse, and you have the four blood moons. I'm screaming, I'm coming. In the latter years, when I put my hook in Russia's jaw and I drag them into the Middle East, that shocking thing happened September the 11th, 2015. It happened. The next thing we're going to hear is the trump of God. The dead in Christ are going to rise. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the laws in the air. Pray up, pack up, look up. We're going up. When you see these things, lift up your head and rejoice. Your redemption draweth nigh. Give him praise in the house of God. How many of you in this room say, Pastor, I have people in my family that are not ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. Can I see your hand? Put your hands down. How many of you are in this room watching by television? 
you're not ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. You've just never made preparation to do so. But you'd like to do that today. Let me see your hand right where you are. God bless you. God bless you. In the balcony. Thank you. God bless you. You're watching by television. You can pray this prayer. And I want you to pray this prayer with me because God is listening. God is recording it. Better still, God's going to answer it. Pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask you for the relatives that I have that are not ready to meet you. I ask you, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit would come and convict them of sin and bring them to the cross that they may have eternal salvation. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to forgive me of all of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness so that I will be ready when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Comes. And the Lord of Lords comes soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. Amen. We're thankful that you've joined us to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are living in the end times. Together, we're changing the world with God's word. We want to share a very special thank you to our ministry partners, those who have supported us through your prayers and generous giving. We also want to encourage you to stay tuned to hear Pastor Hagee's blessing. Hagee Ministries continues to proclaim the truth of God's Word around the globe. Together, we are providing humanitarian aid across Israel, community service initiatives at home and abroad, and transforming the lives of young mothers at the Sanctuary of Hope. Your partnership today ensures we reach the generations of tomorrow through many of today's social media platforms and live web streaming. Become a legacy partner today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org partner. See the Bible come to life by standing in the very places where the stories of the Holy Scriptures unfolded. Join pastors John and Matt Hagee on this extraordinary tour of the Holy Land. Visit historical sites such as the Mount of Beatitudes, where Jesus delivered the Sermon on the Mount, float upon the waters of the Dead Sea, and pray at the Western Wall. Join us November 6th through the 16th, 2023. For more information, call the number on screen or go to jhm.org. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. If you need prayer, call our prayer line or visit our website. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you his peace. May God anoint you this day to be his messenger to the members of your family that do not know him. Let the words that you speak be like arrows from the throne of God into the heart of those that you love, those who are lost and without Christ. May God help you minister to those that cross your path, for you may be the only one that will bless them with the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. May you become a soul winner, for he that winneth souls is wise. In the authority of Jesus' name, receive this blessing. Amen and amen.